South Delta Secondary and the South Delta Artist Guild launched a collaborative project that involves the talents of student writers as well as student and adult visual artists. The purpose of this project is to provide a chance for creative people of various disciplines to influence each other and inspire each other in a way that they're not usually able to do. We are doing a project together with the South Delta Secondary School and the South Delta uh, Artist Guild. Uh, it is to interpret poems that grade 11 and grade 12 have done. I think it's a great idea and a great opportunity for, for the students to, to create and to be um, mindful of their own creations and how their own creations could be interpreted or perceived by others. Um, also, it's a great opportunity for students to, to get behind an idea um, and, and to discuss and, and, um, and share their different points of view. I agree. Uh, my students are really excited about working with uh, a member from the artists community and they're really, really happy to see beyond the classroom, uh, to see that their work could inspire um, a work of art and uh, live beyond the school walls. I'm actually really excited because I've never had my work be published in something or I'm a little nervous to see how the artist will convey it. They'll like hope it's like good enough that they can draw something or paint something really cool. I think that it's really cool that they have so much faith in us in the community that we can actually produce good enough work that someone would be willing to paint. Yeah, I just because we're all high school students, I don't know. I think it's cool. Um, I'm also like super excited because I love English and art, so it's putting them together in a really, really cool way. So yeah, I'm excited to see how it'll turn out. Um, I think this is a really great opportunity that we've gotten. I think it's a really good way for the community to connect that you don't see very often in the arts. The theme this year is transcending vision from vision to voice. Writers have been encouraged to explore and investigate the journey which one takes from dreaming of an idea to seeing it become a reality. The creative writing class at SPSS has uh, explored possibilities that range from political and social change and the voyage from idea to creation in the soul of every artist. Transcending Vision sort of made me think of the process of realizing your dreams and I'm writing about the successes and the failures and how only a few people out of all the people who try to make their vision a reality will actually succeed in that and how there's consequences for when you fail. I'm learning about vision uh, in terms of uh, a wave kind of thing. So a stone may fall into the water and create a ripple, and this stone being an idea is eventually etched into a gem or into something perfect. And this wave is perpetual, it's transcending, it you know, goes beyond any kind of physical boundaries that might be in the way. And I think that a, a vision can be that powerful. It can really transcend anything that we might see as a, an opposition. I'm actually doing a haiku on the concept of control and so I'm kind of analyzing the different types of control that you can have over a person. I'm writing a poem and it's about a man and he uses his voice to inspire everyone around him. His vision is peace on earth and he wants to spread the word. Welcome to the World Poetry Cafe radio show on 102.7 FM. I'm Lucia Goria, co-hosting tonight with Oparin Ortiz, uh, Jesse, Jane and Zoe from the South Delta Secondary School. We are very happy to have you here tonight and our wonderful Leonard who is putting this project together and this is such a wonderful idea. We invited the grade 12 and the grade 11 students to come up with these fantastic poems. Okay, I'll go ahead and read my poem, and it's called Teenage Dream. The teenage dream looks into the mirror. Her blonde hair is framing her face. Eyes shine bright and teeth so white. She can hear the crowd calling her name. Thousands of girls who want to be her. A magenta card sits on her makeup table. Some small fan has made it. The teenage dream tries to remember this young girl's face. As usual, her memory is fuzzy. Cocaine does that to the mind. Teenage Dream knows this girl is ignorant to the reality of fame, but that it's his, her job to convince her it's brilliant. Looking in the mirror, tears starts to form in one of her perfect blue eyes. 
She thinks back to when she was a child. All she wanted was fame. It's not right, whispers teenage dream. It's her time to go on stage now. She takes one last look in the mirror, does another line, and goes out to intoxicate innocent minds with the glamour of fame. Only a few will realize the sick, sad reality. And the teenage dream is left wondering if, it, if it's just her or if it ever really was. She lights a cigarette, sitting on the edge of the universe. The past lies in the distance. Ahead she sees a girl. She whispers, what do you see? She sees herself sitting on the edge of the universe, a cigarette in hand, staring at the cliffs which melt into the stars. There she stays, unmoving, unresponsive, unreachable by anyone, except for the girl who stands on the edge of the cliff, looking in on her mentality, questioning what she has been told, wondering, searching, questioning her own mind. How can she question herself, though, when the girl on the cliff contemplates the universe? She tells her to look and sees herself sitting on the edge of the universe, a cigarette in hand, staring at the cliffs which melt into the stars, and she is alone. What is it that lies where the sand meets the sea? What is there to find ahead where the path twists out of sight? We say we can envision and glimpse what is hidden from our eyes, view cursorily what is obscure in our knowledge. As each day elapses, we breathe in the fleeting moments of the lives we live, the lives that define the people we are. Other lives carry on, unlike those of our own. Lives that we hear of and that we reflect on. Lives unknown to us and inexplicable by simply watching from afar, watching from our minds, our thoughts. Yet perhaps it is possible to see if we can feel, if we can feel what we imagine. Maybe then we would not only walk the road of our own life, but the road of others as well. And we could see side to side in place of merely back and front. From this view, we could sense everything. The night air surrounding us with the city lights illuminating the streets the warm dirt beneath our bare feet and water buckets on our shoulders. The prayers whispered delicately from our lips all speak in the same message, though accented by different cultures and beliefs. Like a simple sunset surrounded by an array of colors, the people around this world frame it with diversity. Who knew there is so much we are unable to unearth if we are not blind to the lives of others, if we can perceive the path that was set to uphold all of our lives as one, a path each one of us has stepped onto a path each one of us has led to create. Traveling through the lives of each person in this world, it is a path promising that new prospects will always await. Co-op Radio 102.7 FM, um, in the heart of Vancouver, Canada, unceded First Nations territory. And we're back with these amazing high school students. And um, we want to introduce them. There's Sarah. Baki, Baki. and Olivia Restatello, and they're going to be reading poems, talking about the project. My poem is called My Hands. I crawl through black, I slide through ink, the darkness I do pour and drink. Your eyes are mine, they do not see, my hands, they stretch exquisitely. My calm grows short, my patience thin, I wash my breath atop your skin. The quiet fills my darkness deep. The hands of fear shall slowly creep. My poem's called The Pull. Her hands tremble and palms sweat with the idea of the cycle continuing. Resistance is apparent, a constant battle, struggle, war. The pull, the push, and the attempt at resistance. Trying to hold on to the last sense of falsibility, to overcome, triumph, and conquer the villain that pulls her closer and closer to defeat. An empty bathroom, stall open, tap running. A slow trickle to hide the sound of a lonely girl with head hung in embarrassment, upset, and emptiness. Surrendering again to the malevolence that binds her. As her head bows, her body curls to give in to the ongoing pull. And just as fast as it came, it left. We started it in September. As soon as the school started, I was in grade 11. And then uh, we also went into grade 12 class and got them to write a lot of poems. Uh, then when they were finished, we got it all emailed and uh, copied so that uh, the art students were then designed to interpret some of these poems and also we then turned over a whole raft of the poems to 
the South Delta Artist Guild's members. And we had the difficult task of trying to get involved in a teenage thinking and uh, create something uh, of an art show for them. And uh, I am surprised at so many of the extremely good pictures that we have received so far. I think as a writer, when you come up with a piece of work like this, you can feel so attached and like it's your baby almost. And so giving the, an artist a, a, like an opportunity to embody it in a different way has been such a cool experience for me. And I'm so excited to see how my work turns out on paper and drawn. We were given a piece of writing, a poem or a story, and we were asked to read it and paint a picture or draw a picture based on our feelings about the poem. And what do you think about the notion of taking the written word and drawing inspiration from that? I think it's a brilliant idea because it helps you, you know, understand poetry and stories more and it helps you understand the writing and it's your classmates' work so it helps you understand them a little bit more too. Well, I think both of those art forms share a similar experience. We both have grappled with that fear of facing the blank page and wondering what we're going to do as we stare into the white blank page. And it's all them. They're pouring their soul out onto the page. So I think it's a natural partnership to combine some writing with some visual art. I was a girl who grew up in Chicago. She had a really rough upbringing, and she ended up on the streets becoming a prostitute. And um, it talked about how she didn't like how people just assumed things about her, and how just because she was on the streets, it meant she was crazy and didn't have a life and that kind of stuff when they don't know what she went through. Mine's about a, like a dog that may seem kind of ferocious. But uh, in the end, he ends up kind of being a little bit of a, like a puppy, kind of a fun dog. I'm doing a poem by Emma McFarlane, which is a lot about um, a girl breaking up with her boyfriend and feeling like the ocean is draining. Um, so what I did was I sort of, because there's a lot of imagery about clinging and there's sort of the contrasting of um, being drawn apart, um, that's why I did the tongues being uh, drawn together. So, and uh, because of the draining imagery, I've got a drain plug hanging from it. So there's a lot of like uh, pulling apart and coming together in the poem. And yeah, I got, I got a feel for like a morning type of thing because it's sort of like a new chapter in her life in the poem. I'm drawing a poem and the poem is about a beach and the sun is shining and there are birds flying. And I've got the sun here and it's sunset and it's almost um, evening, yeah. the sun is here, mm -hmm. the rocks are here, okay. the birds here, and the trees here, which um, are like in a fog or something, okay. and fade into the background. And it's a really nice poem, and it's, it describes a wonderful setting, and I'm trying to catch that on my picture. Here at the South Delta Artist Guild's uh, workshop, uh, we uh, occupy the longhouse with a gallery and also a very nice uh, area called our workshop, which the Artist Guild use as a drop-in center. So now we have a whole bunch of us that have been dropping in to do the project of interpreting these poems and short stories into pictures. Well, this poem is, uh, is called The Edge. And uh, it's about uh, this girl sitting at the edge of the universe. And she's uh, smoking at the same time. And she light up a cigarette and uh, she look, she leave everything behind her, like the house. I put the house in here and then this is the universe. <laughs>
The name of the poem is called The Pull, and I interpret it as um, this a woman, she has an addiction, and she's fighting within herself um, whether she should go on and have whatever she, <laughs> she needs or um, abstain. It's called The Invisible View. It's uh, Zoe Sarathus. And um, so it's, uh, it starts off, uh, it talks about where the land meets the sea and then uh, the paths twisting out of sight. And there's a few things that jump out, like walking the road of your own life, and, uh, but also the road of others as well. So there's no easy way, you know, and everybody gets there at the same time. They just take different routes. And a couple other things I, I thought I'd just point out too. It's a simple sunset surrounded by an array of colors. And, and in the end, it says, traveling through our lives of each person in this world, it is a path promising that new prospects will always await. So it, it's, it's really quite profound. It's a, it's a very, very nice poem, very profound. The title is The Vision. And uh, it talks about uh, uh, an abyss, uh, portal, mist. So I love working on mist. And uh, hopefully, whoever wrote it would be pleased with the painting. It's called Sworn Secrecy. And basically, it's when somebody tells you something that I can understand from the poem, and they want it to keep a secret. So the idea of the lock is so they do not give it away. And secrets can last for years, therefore the rust. The poem is called Thoughts from a Non-Writer. And uh, there wasn't a lot of visuals in it, so there was a lot of feeling in it. And so I had to sit with it for, I don't know, I think three or four days and read it over and over again. And then what started emerging for me was that some of the words um, that describe how the poet feels about writing, like exposing yourself. Um, it takes a certain kind of courage to write, to put your soul on the line. And I thought, hey, I feel that way when I paint. So I thought, oh, I'll lift some of those words and put it in, in integrate it into the painting. And sometimes uh, this poet says the best part of writing is when the words come naturally flowing across the page and spilling over like water. And other times it was like wild horses fighting the, the poet. And I thought, hey, this is, really resonates with me. I had no reference material. So I had to sit for a few days and kind of think, OK, what does this feel like? Not what does it look like? And how then can I take the feelings and put them into some kind of depiction. We feel that it is a really good project to uh, partner with the high school uh, and our artist guild uh, because we have now an interrelationship with young people together with the older uh, artist members. A slam poem about the Occupy movement and um, I had just gone the weekend before we got this project I had just gone down to uh, Occupy Vancouver it was the first day and I f had felt really inspired by that and it did feel like a voice to vision kind of thing it was just a poster someone po uh, printed in a magazine and suddenly it was this huge movement so it just seemed like it fit the theme I loved I loved it I loved the idea of putting writing and art together because those are my two passions already so it was it was a good mix. It's connected to me in a lot of ways one through the slam poetry and two because um, it was about Jamie Hubley which who was a, um, a boy who committed suicide in Ottawa um, because of homophobic bullying and, and stuff so I, I did feel a bit of a connection to this project and I've 
that's, I, I had to put a lot of thought into what I was going to do. I'm really excited about it and I definitely see how the artist interpreted the poem. Um, so I'm really excited about it. My poem was written by Liam McGee, um, REM Sleep. Um, it was a lot about uh, ending wars and coming to a peace treaty, a union for all the world, sort of. Um, talking about Adam and Eve and creation. Um, and my interpretation here is of soldiers dropping their weapons and sort of walking away from wars and destruction and turning to peace. What we are all, you are all experiencing today is no ordinary art show. It's no ordinary school project, it's no ordinary community event. And in many ways, what took place over these last three months truly did transcend division. The work done by the artists and the students, the teachers and the other community members who were connected went beyond what we envisioned last September. Uh, the writing students this year began this journey in October as they grappled with the show's theme. And the show's theme was a difficult one. Their very thoughtful and articulate words dug deep. I think you've seen that if you've had time to read what they've written. It dug deep into life's mysteries and tried to make sense of that phrase, transcending vision from vision to voice. As the artists read and responded to the written passages, they too had to move beyond their ordinary manner of working. So driven by the task to honor each author's voice, they researched, they planned, and they executed visual works that would somehow reflect the text given to them. For some of us, this process was very uncomfortable and frustrating, but for others, and I think you could probably speak to the artists in the room, it was very enlightening and enriching. But for everyone, no matter if it was really difficult or really easy for you, I do truly believe that it did transcend ordinary learning. I hope that you will carry with you some positive thoughts of what you have experienced. And as you return to your busy lives, there are some thoughts that you will carry away with you. And here are some little seeds I would like to plant into your head. First of all, may you recognize the great work of the South Delta Artists Guild. I think the South Delta Artists Guild is truly the little engine that could. They strive to keep their work moving along and their projects current, and they reach out, as they did in this project, to the greater community with innovative ideas. I hope my students that are here and the English students that are here will take time to look around the room and, uh-oh. <laughs> and realize that you are supported by a very large group of adults and senior citizens who truly appreciate and accept you for what you do as a positive contribution to this society. That you are going to recognize that you're not out there alone, that we think what you do is wonderful and the senior citizens in this community do too, and your parents and the other adults do get it. They understand you, and that you're not all out there alone, and if you continue to work in positive ways, you will get that recognition. You will continue to get pats on the back. And I hope the adults in the room will come to realize by looking at the work, by reading the work, that you realize the great bank of knowledge, the unabashed creativity, the honesty and the raw talent that is represented here by our South Delta youth. I, in closing, would like to say that I am very privileged, I feel privileged to have been part of this project. I truly believe that it did transcend our vision. 
It took those of us involved beyond our learning, our ordinary learning process. It took us outside the proverbial box. And it led us to a place where we've had to examine our beliefs, research our subject matter, expand our skills, be innovative, and then expose our artistic voices to public scrutiny. And as an art educator, there can simply be no better learning experience. So I thank you.